good afternoon all so today we are going to discuss second specimen preparation in electron microscopy so in the last session we have given a brief introduction about electron microscopy and also the two types of electron microscopy that is transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy so already we have studied these portions in the previous year so i'm not uh, describing much more detail introduction electron microscopy they are very powerful tools for visualizing biological samples and this may help the scientist to view the cells tissues and small organisms in a very great detail however this biological samples can't be viewed on electron microscope while alive so we should um, the samples which are observed under this electron microscopy are dead samples and live samples can't be um, observed so instead the samples must undergo complex preparation steps to help them withstand the environment inside the microscope the preparation process kills the tissues and can also cause changes in the samples appearance too for scientists who wish to view the biological samples this poses a great challenge how can the sample be preserved so that it looks as much as possible like it would in the living organism while still being able to withstand being visualized in the electron microscope so Uh, this uh, surviving a hostile environment there are two reasons why living things can't survive in an electron microscope that is mainly the power of electron beam that is directed at the sample and also the vacuum inside the microscope these two factors or reasons which make the sample uh, dead with so the samples will not be alive the electron beam which is inside this transmission electron microscope it may cause problems for the biological samples because of its high energy and it needs to have enough energy to pass right through the sample and out the other side so the temperature can get up to 150 degree celsius when the beam hits the sample so this temperature is too high for the living cells to survive the scanning electron microscopes use a low energy electron beam but it can't still be damaging to the sample even though they are using low energy electron beam it still may cause damage to the sample next reason the vacuum inside this electron microscope it is important for its function too because without a vacuum electrons being aimed at the sample would be deflected so the electrons would be deflected or knocked of course when they hit the air particles but liquid water which is abundant in the biological samples evaporates immediately in the vacuum if this happens the biological sample would vaporize in front of your eyes so to be visualized by the electron microscope the biological uh, samples need to be first of all fixed so the electron beam doesn't destroy them and also the sample should be dried thoroughly so the vacuum doesn't affect them fixation a snapshot of the living sample the first and perhaps most important step in the preparation process is fixation in this step the living tissue it is chemically treated to stabilize it this kills the tissue samples at the same time it is important to fix a sample as quickly as possible because as soon as the tissue is removed from its natural environment it starts to change for instance oxygen level starts to drop as soon as the tissue is removed from an organism this causes the mitochondria within the cell to uh, start to change their appearance another common change in the fixation process is that 
lipids tend to form micelles so if the lipid content is present in the sample they tends to form micelles so these are all the um, uh, deformities if the sample is not fixed fixation process this can be performed using different reagents micelles actually what do you mean by micelles these are the strange shaped right um, micelles and uh, these are the structures which are seen within the lipids actually we are studying this micelles in the lipid digestion the micelles and the strange shaped mitochondria these are the examples of the artifact artifacts are nothing but the structures that can be seen under the microscope but they are not found in the living cells so it is very important to be aware that artifacts can be introduced during fixation process so that you don't mistake them for the real parts of the sample so um, telling the difference between an artifact and a real structure it could be very difficult to differentiate both artifacts and the real structures to minimize this introduction of artifacts scientists are continuously experimenting with new ways to prepare samples one approach is to freeze the sample very quickly instead of fixing it providing the sample stays cold enough this lock ups the water and prevent it from evaporating inside the microscope freezing samples these are very commonly used in scanning electron microscope and it is also known as cryosem and it is still in the early stages of development of tem transmission electron microscope now the sample preparation in tem and sem the main differences it is mainly fixation and dehydration these are the important for preparing samples for both the tem and sem other aspects of sample preparation differ greatly because of the two microscopes have different requirements for the tem the samples must be cut into very thin cross sections this helps to allow the electrons to pass right through the sample after being fixed and dehydrated the samples are then embedded in a hard resin to make them easier to cut then an instrument called ultra microtome is used to cut the samples into ultra thin slices that is in between 100 nanometer or thinner then samples are also treated with heavy metals why to increase the level of contrast in the final images so the parts of the sample that interact strongly with the metals show up as darker areas that is in the shadow cast mechanism we will discuss it later now the samples destined for the sem there is no need of cutting them to thin sections why because the sem visualizes only the surface of three dimensional objects instead sem samples are coated with a thin layer of metal metal we are using is usually gold or gold palladium the metal coating it makes the sample more conductive it acts in a similar way to an electrical wire drawing away the electrons that are bombarding the sample without the metal coating many samples build up electrons and this can cause charging artifacts so many samples build up electrons in the absence of metal coating which may result in charging artifacts so these are the strange looking areas on sem images and it may gives a false impression of how samples look so the samples distinct for viewing on the scanning electron microscopy are often coated with a thin metal before hand now these are artifacts it look like part of the microscope samples but are actually a side effect of sample preparation or the conditions in the microscope this white color area are called artifacts so that's all about today's class in the next session we can discuss different methods which are used in the sample preparation in sem and tem separate okay thank you all